London after the rape. From the moment that human beings started communicating with electrical and electromagnetic signals, the ether has been a spooky place. Four years after Samuel Morse strung up his first telegraph wire in 1844, two young girls in upstate New York kick-started spiritualism, a massively popular occult religion which attempted to fuse science and seance. Now you may think that this ghoulish dial tweaking has gone the way of the dousing rod, but electromagnetic spiritualism is alive and well. Today, aficionados call it electronic voice phenomena, or EVP. Interestingly, one of the most important requirements for good EVP is the presence of noise, a distorted channel, interference, echo, superimposition. In other words, all the active elements of our current hip-hop dub mixology are designed to receive these spectral messages. No wonder the stuff can put you into another world. Eric Davis, Dead Machines, a review of the ghost orchid and electromagnetic voice phenomena. A massive new addition to the sonic ontology canon, the self-titled album by Burial on Code9's Hyperdub label. Burial is the kind of album I've dreamt of for years, literally. It is oneric dance music. A collection of the dreamed songs Ian Penman imagined in his epochal piece on Tricky's Max and Key. Max and Key would be a reference point here, as would Pull. Like both these artists, Burial conjures audio spectres out of the crackle, foregrounding rather than repressing sounds, accidental materialities. Tricky and Pull's crackleology was a further development of Dub's materialist sorcery, in which the seam of its recording was turned inside out for us to hear and exult in, when we had been used to the re of recording being repressed, recessed, as though it really were just a re-presentation of something that already existed in its own right. Pemmon. But rather than the hydroponic heat of Tricky's Bristol, or the dank caverns of Poles Berlin, burial sound evokes what the press release calls a near-future South London underwater. You can never tell if the crackle is the burning static off pirate radio or the tropical downpour of the submerged city out of the window. Near-future, maybe. But listening to burial as I walk through damp and drizzly South London streets in this abortive spring, it strikes me that the LP is very London now, which is to say it suggests a city haunted not only by the past, but by lost futures. It seems to have less to do with the near future than with the tantalizing ache of a future just out of reach. It's interesting to compare the LP with the forthcoming EP on Kin by Johnny Dark. Johnny's Toronto-based New Step is a kind of science fictional what-if exercise. What if the late 90s London two-step inhuman feminine sound had continued to mutate without devolving into the sullen dead ends of grime and dubstep? The ultra-exuberance of Johnny's sound, garish rather than grimy, contrasts starkly with the mournful restraint of the burial album. Instead of the can't-wait of two steps anorgasmic anticipation plateau, burial is haunted by what once was, what could have been, and, most keeningly, what could still happen. Johnny's sound has all the freshness of newly sprayed graffiti, the burial LP is like the faded ten-year-old tag of a kid whose rave dreams have been crushed by a series of dead-end jobs. Burial is an elegy for the hardcore continuum, a memories from the haunted ballroom for the rave generation. It is like walking into the abandoned spaces once carnivalized by raves and finding them returned to depopulated dereliction. Muted air horns flare like the ghosts of raves past. Broken glass cracks underfoot. MDMA flashbacks bring London to unlife in the way that hallucinogens brought demons crawling out of the subways in Jacob's Ladders, New York. Audio hallucinations transform the city's rhythms into inorganic beings, more dejected than malign. You can see faces in the clouds and hear voices in the crackle. What you momentarily thought was muffled bass turns out only to be the rumbling of tube trains. 
Burial's mourning and melancholia set it apart from Dubstep's emotional autism and austerity. My problem with Dubstep has been that in constituting Dub as a positive entity, with no relation to the song or to pop, it has too often missed the spectrality wrought by Dub's subtraction in process. The emptying out has tended to produce not space, but an oppressive, claustrophobic flatness. If, by contrast, Burial's schizophonic ontology has a 3D depth of field, it is in part because of the way it grants a privileged role to voices under erasure, returning to Dub's phono decentrism. Penman again, Dub makes of the voice not a self-possession, but a dispossession, a re-possession by the studio, detoured through the hidden circuits of the recording console. Snatches of plaintive vocals skitter through the tracks like fragments of abandoned love letters blowing through streets blighted by an unnamed catastrophe. The effect is as heartbreakingly poignant as the long tracking shot in Tarkovsky's Stalker that lingers over sublime objects become trash. Burial's London is a wounded city, populated by ecstasy casualties on day release from psychiatric units, disappointed lovers on night buses, parents who can't quite bring themselves to sell their rave 12 inches at a car boot sale, all of them with haunted looks on their faces, but also haunting their interpassively nihilist kids with the thought that things weren't always like this. The sadness in the Dem 2 meets Vinnie Riley era Deruti column You Hurt Me and Gutted is almost overwhelming. Southern comfort only deadens the pain. Ravers have become deadbeats, and burials' beats are accordingly undead, like the tick-tock of an off-kilter metronome in an abandoned Silent Hill school, the clack-clack of graffiti-splashed ghost trains idling in sidings. Ten years ago, Codwo compared the harsh, roaring noise of no U-turns Hoover bass with the sound of a thousand car alarms going off simultaneously. The subdued bass on burial is the spectral echo of a roar, burned out cars remembering the noise they once made. Burial reminds me, actually, of paintings by Nigel Cook currently on show, appropriately enough, at the South London Gallery in Camberwell. I'll be writing more about Cook's paintings over the next few days, but the morose figures cook graffitis onto his own paintings are perfect visual analogues for burial sound. A decade ago, jungle and hip-hop invoked devils, demons, and angels. Burial sound, however, summons the chain-smoking plants and sobbing vegetables that sigh longingly in Cook's painting. Speaking at the Tate last week, Cook observed that much of the violence of graffiti comes from its velocity. There's something of an affinity between the way that Cook recreates graffiti in the slow medium of oil paints, and the way in which burials submerge, dubmerge, raves hyperkinesis in a stately melancholia. Burials' dilapidated Afro-no-futurism does for London in the noughties what Wu-Tang did for New York in the nineties. It delivers what Massive Attack promised but never really achieved. It's everything that Goldie's Timeless ought to have been. It's the dub city's counterpart to Luomo's vocal city. Imagine a spectralized gorillas on downers, but a tenth as smug and ten times as evocative. Burial is one of the albums of the decade. Trust me. <laughs>